it's really important for you to prioritize some kind of legal strategy or at least a knowledge strategy when you're trying to grow your business. If you can't afford an attorney for any reason, like speak to the SBA, they might be able to at least let you know what's available in general, but it's really important for you to invest in knowing what's out there so that you have the full picture. And so you're able to like prioritize growth, even in the case of uncertainty. Hey there, CEOs. My name is Brandi Gar, and I'm your host. And my mission for this podcast is to help you to build a profitable wedding business that you love. Welcome to the Wedding Pro CEO Podcast. As we get ready to head into a brand new year, the energy is undeniable. There's so much excitement surrounding the new year brand new goals to set and possibilities are endless and maybe even a few New Year's resolutions. But as we move into 2023, I would be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge that there's a lot of uncertainty in our world. The possibility of a recession, inflation at an all-time high, and business owners who are nervous about what could come in 2023. Well, friends, I am so excited about today's episode because I'm talking with my good friend Kunbi from Legally Set, and we're talking all about how to protect your business in times of uncertainty, things that you can do now as we move into this year to make sure that if uncertainty occurs, and not even just through a recession, but even with sickness or an emergency that you just don't know is coming, how you can protect your business now for those times of uncertainty. I love Kunbi so much. She does not hold back. She is clear and to the point with all of her tips. I absolutely love her. So I know that you're gonna enjoy this episode. So thank you so much for being here. Let's get right into this one. You guys, I'm going to apologize in advance for my voice. I was like, Kunbi, I've wanted you on this show for so long. I am not rescheduling, and we're just going to go with it. If I were to describe 2023, I would say uncertain times is what we're looking at, right? We're possibly on the midst of a recession. We have inflation. I know that there's a lot of uncertainty out there as we're going into the new year. And so that's what Kunbi and I are going to talk all about today. And so Kunbi, like, what makes you so passionate about this topic? I read somewhere that everybody is one emergency away from being out of business. Like Brandy knows, like I'm always yelling at people about the business or legal side of things just because I think it's really important. Having been a business attorney for 12 years now, it's really important for me that people don't get blindsided because we're not prepared for it. A lot of times what ends up happening is that you find yourself in like in a reaction instead of like a proactiveness where you've already kind of expected certain things to be there. So that's Mm -hmm. why it's so important. But most important for for me was I remember how my like people felt in April and May of 2020. That's what I was gonna say. In March, we were all like, "Oh, it's gonna be two weeks, right? Two weeks to flatten the curve." Yeah, I'm not even being I'm not being dramatic. People cried on the phone with me, like, "Oh my god, like this is my business. What am I going wow. to do?" Like they're asking for somebody was asking for ninety five thousand dollars back. Do you what? know what I mean? Because weddings are even one thing, which yeah. It's a huge thing, but like even corporate events, you know, they, they have larger spends. So when everybody's going silent and asking for their quote unquote retainers back or the money they've already paid for work that's already yeah. happening, but it felt traumatic. A lot of yes. people that were there in 2020 aren't here in 2022 or 2023. They're not, they're not in business. Everybody is one emergency away from being out of business. And truly, I- honestly, that's sad. I think that's 100% true, though. And that's, you know, I talk about profit so much because when you're running a business that every dollar that comes in is going right back out for expenses, that really leaves you so little emergency fund. And I don't know that any of us were necessarily prepared for what happened in 2020. You know, I don't think no financial guru ever said, make sure you have a year's worth if your revenue stops tomorrow. Right. So we're not necessarily talking about that, but it is that you need to be prepared for what next year could bring, what 2023 could bring. So what tip number one would be for really preparing our businesses for this uncertain year? If you are listening to this, there is no reason why you shouldn't be operating with a business account of some sort. I really hope that that's the situation. I know there are a lot of sole proprietors out there. I, for one, I'm a big like supporter of like the escrow account process. That's where you hold the money in limbo in terms of like a retainer or mm-hmm. something. So you're not spending all the money that's coming in immediately in the event that there's some kind of like 
crazy thing that involves maybe having to give money back or having Mm -hmm. to use a certain amount of money to keep your business afloat so that your business has something to rely on in the event that there are quiet times is one that I would just get out of the way immediately. Okay. So, and when you say business account, I know what you mean, but just to be super clear, we don't mean like a business Instagram account or a business Facebook. She's talking about an actual checking and savings account for your business. Yes, the IRS, they want to see how you're mingling or not mingling funds. <laughs> and they want to make sure that they want to see how you have established yourself as a separate entity. Mingling those funds like with your personal assets or anything like that, it leads to disaster. But it's really truly in the time of crisis that you realize that all these things are there not just to protect you, but to also shield you from certain kind of liability. You also jail. My ministry, quote unquote, is strong contracts. I do not believe that you should be operating with any loopholes. The uncertainty shouldn't apply to your contracts. Your contracts should not be uncertain about how you are operating. So make sure that you are controlling it by establishing the terms and the processes in how you're going to be handling any kind of conflict, dispute, or situation inside that agreement. COVID really showed us how critical a contract is in interacting with another party. Anybody that's listening to this, even if you weren't in business during COVID, Mm -hmm. you saw what was happening, right? Like if that taught us nothing, it should have taught you that you need to have a strong contract. And then also Mm -hmm. just to piggyback on that, Kumbi, understanding what your contract says, right? Like how often do you just grab a contract, upload it into your system, and you have no idea what you're protected against or even what the clauses mean. And I understand it's a lot of legal jargon, but when push comes to shove and a client pushes you on it, do you know what it means or do you have the resources to go figure out what it means, I guess? Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. And Brady, this is clearly why you have been in business as long as you have been in. You know, I learned through trial and error. One thing we say in Nigeria is experience is the best teacher. There's nothing that's going to teach you anything more or humble you more than experience, especially someone that's been in the game long enough knows that a lot of things, even in your agreements, even in your systems of um, processes, your SOPs, your operations, it's based on experience. Maybe one client slapped you one time and then you're like, you know what? We need a harassment clause. You said something that's so important and something that I really passionately preach about is making sure that you understand the terms of your agreement. Even if you are purchasing a contract template from Legally Set, all the time I still write there, please make sure that you have an attorney in your jurisdiction review it. Because you want to also make sure you understand how and when and where your contract is protecting you against certain things. But guess what? If you do not understand the terms of your agreement or you yes. do not have an attorney interacting during these red line conversations, you're going to agree to things that could literally be catastrophic in the event of uncertainty. Uncertainty doesn't even apply to like general things like the recession or like inflation yeah. or COVID or monkeypox or God knows, literally a meteor at this point. It also applies to things that happen on the day of the event. Like for instance, in the event that somebody gets too handsy with members Uh, of your staff. Yes. How is that accounted for in your contract? Because you do know that you have a responsibility as an employer to ensure the safety and like situation of your staff, because that in itself is a liability in the event that something goes wrong. Do you know what I mean? Uncertainty goes from like the, the larger general conversations, even to the more minuscule things. And so making sure that your agreements are clear as to what and how you will handle certain situations and yes. what you will not <laughs> tolerate or handle certain situations is really important. Yeah. We actually update our contract fairly often and kind of like what you just said, it's like you might have a client that shows you that you need a new clause in your contract. You know, I'm a wedding planner. We had a mm-hmm. harassment clause. So if somebody got crazy on site or handsy or whatever, but it didn't protect us during the planning phase. And we had a client <laughs> where we needed to be protected during the planning phase from harassment. And I was like, we have nothing in our contract saying that during the planning. And in 15 years, that was the first time, honestly, that I had had that situation happen. But I was like, I want an out from this legally to be able to say, you don't get to treat my team that way. 
honestly, Brandy and I didn't plan this. Like no. she's saying this like based on her experience. Like I think making sure that it's across the term of your agreement, not just on the event itself. Right. The term of your agreement is through the wedding planning process, the entire process, being able to say that in the event that this happens, I can suspend services or terminate services in the event yeah. that it persists. That's really important. It helps set boundaries. Boundaries I am a huge fan of. So yes. like making sure that's clear from the beginning is a good it's a good thing. My yes. next thing for me is also having a business continuity plan. Okay. A business continuity plan is something basically that's going to dictate what the process is in the event of an emergency or in the event that something happens that's making it difficult for you to proceed with your regular play of business. And okay. a plan in place is really important, especially if you have employees or contractors. Yes. I need a plan in place in the event that I'm literally on God's door waiting because I'm <laughs> sick again. Yes. Like, do you know what I mean? I have yes. a continuity because I have a partner. My partner, Leah, knows that in the event, she, like, she's always there like, oh God, here you go again. Let's go. And she, <laughs> she picks up on that and is able to like, you know, take care of things in the event that happened. But maybe you have to take a step back because you had to cut your workforce by 50%. What's okay. the plan there? Like who are the people around, maybe other contractors, other event pros that are of, of similar ilk and similar aesthetic. You should have at least three people on your speed dial that are maybe even, yes, they are competitors, but you guys know that's your tribe. Yes. Your tribe in the sense that in the event that I am unable to carry out this service, can I tap you in? We have an arrangement in place. Just in general, a one pager, just something simple. Here is Brandy's phone number. Call Brandy okay. immediately and let her know that this is a distress. In the event of an emergency, you want to have some kind of plan in place. Have it yeah. accessible. Indicate someone that is next in charge, next in line in the event of that, and start executing what that plan looks like. During COVID, my team actually pitched in a few times, um, exactly like you were saying, where a single owner mm -hmm. company got COVID, didn't mm -hmm. have a team necessarily, mm -hmm. which was fine. We were happy to do it. You know, we have the capacity to help. Yeah. And so we were able to go execute those weddings. Do we need to tell the client or does it need to say somewhere in our contract what happens in the event of an emergency? Yes, you do. Because then if you don't have something like that in your contract, it yes. could then be something that people pick at. So you want to say something like having a suitable emergency substitute being provided. If, for instance, how you did a blush planner, and then maybe say that anybody that works under that umbrella yeah. is a blush planner. But really saying that a suitable emergency substitute would be provided makes it clearer from the beginning that in the event that that individual is not able to perform. And this is the reason why I'm also always preaching that you enter agreements as your entity, because your entity doesn't limit it to an individual. Right. It says that anybody under the umbrella of the entity is performing that service. But saying that a suitable emergency substitute is going to probably then at least hand some of that uncertainty as to who's going to be performing the service. Yes. So good. Okay. Super, super helpful. Okay. I like that one. And that is important, you guys. Like we all know you can get sick mm -hmm. like me apparently right now. The next one is business interruption insurance. Having some kind of insurance in place. I am not an insurance broker. I barely <laughs> know math. So I'm going to tell you that from the beginning. But I think speaking with your insurance broker and exploring coverage available to you is really important okay. because business interruption insurance in the event that you are not able to perform your service and maybe nobody else is or in the event that like, you know, like we said, God forbid, but if there is a recession like looming, you want to also make sure that you have something in the event that you are interrupted and unable to perform your services for an extended period of time. Something yeah. needs to be a bridge there so you're not having to come out of pocket to cover a lot of things. And that's what those kind of insurance is. It seems expensive more on the front end, but the reason why they're there is to help fill those gaps. So if you're like plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, if they all fail, then you know that at least the insurance is there to carry the load if like anything happens. Insurance is actually a critical aspect of being a successful CEO. I believe that 100%. Yeah, it, it irritates me because I don't want to pay it. And I'm like, we're never going to use this. But in the event we did have to use it, it would save our business. And my business is the only income that comes into my household. For us, I think it's massively important to make sure that we're protecting that. What's our next one? It's time for us to have that uncomfortable conversation about reviewing your pricing. It's yes, also girl, because pricing keep talking. 
I love it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's really important. Money talks, but it also pays bills. It saves really uncomfortable conversations and keeps you from going broke. So it's really important that you figure out what the prevailing wage is in your jurisdiction. The Department of Labor has that information there. Also figure out what your experience brings into the table. And going back to what Brandy and I discussed in the first place about understanding your agreements, you also want to understand your cash flow. Understanding what your cash flow looks like is important. We are, as creatives or as event professionals, sometimes we chase the passion track and then yeah. completely like ignore the back end aspect. Cash flow is something you need to be able to understand. Even if you have a bookkeeper, even if you have an accountant, if you do not know what's happening in your back end, that's not okay. Making sure that you've evolved your pricing strategy and your pricing situation to enable and ensure profit in some form mm -hmm. is another way to help protect yourself or prepare yourself for uncertainty. So at least if the uncertainty lingers for like over a month, you're not out of business. At Wedding MBA, I did a presentation on profit specifically, and the quote I used was that there's no purpose if you have no profit. That's exactly what happens in our industry so often is it's like, you know, I just want to plan weddings or I want to make people dance on the dance floor all night or I want to take beautiful images and give people their legacy albums. And I love all of that, but you can't mm -hmm. continue to do anything any of that, if you don't have the money to stay in business and you exactly. must have profit, you should be raising your prices. And my suggestion is about 20%. I know that sounds crazy to people. And obviously you should do whatever feels right to you. You know, inflation is just under 10%. So if you're going to raise your prices 10%, you're really just giving yourself a cost of living increase. So if you're wanting to raise your prices for next year, about 20% is going to be an actual raise in price. And milk costs freaking $5 a gallon, $6 a gallon now. Like nobody should be balking at your prices, okay? I agree with everything you said. I think that you should be comfortable raising your prices. Yeah. You should be raising that because every single year that you are in business is a significant oh. increase in the experience, sure. especially in a business that has no barrier to entry. So new <laughs> people are popping up every single day, every single year that you continue to experience and you continue to strengthen your, your value and your brand yes. is in an additional year that deserves a raise in prices. Um, to quote the philosopher Fat Joe, Yesterday's price is not today's price. No. So like we need to make sure that we bear that in mind. Yes. Nobody yes. has anything more deeper than that statement. Your pricing is empowering you to be able to compete. Like keeping that in mind is really an important thing. And I, another thing I've discovered, employees don't even wait long to ask for raises anymore. Oh my like, gosh. They will be like, oh, like maybe one month in, I'm like, oh, so can we have a performance evaluation so we can right. talk more because I'm ready to leave. <laughs> so like having that in, in place, like it's just really important. Not only empowers you as an entrepreneur, but it empowers you as an employee. I'm sorry, employer. So making sure that you have some kind of pricing or profit plan in place is really important when fighting uncertainty. A hundred percent. This is so good, Kunbi. I mm. am loving all these tips. Okay. Do you have additional tips or was that the last one? I have one more and this is making sure that you are willing and able to accept help or at least know where the help lies. Yes. Make sure you're leaning into the federal, state, county, district programs. There are so many programs out there to help entrepreneurs. Making sure you're leaning on that help is really important. The SBA, the Small Business Administration made by the U.S. government, also has a lot of things in place. They did have a lot of things come up during, for instance, like COVID. They had like the SBA Paycheck Protection Program. They had the disaster assistance loans. Yeah. There are things there that you really should explore. People hear loans people hear things like that and think oh my god i'm not trying to take a loan or whatever your pride is literally what is standing between you and success so just making sure that you explore the different variants and making sure that you're leaning on help knowing fully that there are protections in place in the event there is a catastrophic disaster or something mm -hmm. on the other hand that makes you unable to proceed lean on that help and that's definitely one thing that i want people to know you know looking back when COVID hit, we had emergency mm -hmm. funds. We had an, enough to get us through a, an, a period of time, but certainly not for what happened. We did immediately get the PPP. However, yeah. when the EIDL came available, we were like, we don't really need it. And a really good friend of mine who I consider a mentor, Susan Sutherland, was like, 
absolutely take it. (laughs) Do not turn it down because one, we don't know how long this is going to last. And two, why? If the government is offering to give you a loan at 3%, which you'll never get again in your life, protect Mm -hmm. your business, put the cash in your bank account and make sure that you're protected. And to be honest, I'm so glad that she told me that because my pride was getting in my way. I was like, we don't need it. We can survive without it. But we would have been penny to penny and really spending so much of our time focused on how to stretch from one month to the next versus how to grow our sales and how to grow our business. And so our business was able to thrive through COVID because of exactly what you just said. Like we weren't too prideful to say, yeah, I think we're going to take it because it allowed us a little bit more freedom to not have to worry about the finances so much, you know? So I think that's important. I'm glad you brought that up. Brandy, I like literally everything. Like I said, we did not plan this conversation. No. And then she's able to shed light on like even more practical experience because she's living it. There's something I say all the time. Your shame, your fear of looking stupid in front of other people is what's yeah. holding you back in life. Yes. And you need to really, really fight that because at the end of the day, your business is your business and nobody's going to care about it more than you do. Nope. It's pride that's holding a lot of people from being able to tap into what's available for them. Yes. Like billionaires took those loans. Yep. Billionaires yep. took those loans because at the end of the day, you shouldn't be spending your money when you're able to spend the government's money or the money that's available to you legally <laughs> right. in, in an ability to be able to increase and ensure profit or at least sustenance in your business. Look yeah. at what she said about the, the percentages, the interest rates. Like it's numbers that are unheard of. Right. Numbers are unheard of. Yes. So being able to tap into that and ensure like a more sustainable and successful growth for your business or at least even maintenance of your business. It's really important for you to prioritize some kind of legal strategy or at least a knowledge strategy when you're trying to grow your business. If you can't afford an attorney for any reason, like speak to the SBA, they might be able to at least let you know what's available in general. But it's really important for you to invest in knowing what's out there so that you you have the full picture. And so you're able to like prioritize growth, even in the case of uncertainty. Yes. hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Kunbi, I love this episode so much. I always love talking to you because I just love how you're like, don't be stupid. Like, just don't be stupid. <laughs> I, I, I think I say stupid at least five times, even at the wedding pro CEO. You did, for sure. You absolutely did, and I love it. So, Kunbi, tell everybody where they can go find you. You can find me at Legally Set. Legally Set is our contract template shop, but we're also, like, prioritizing education. So, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Legally Set. If you want to find me personally, or if you want to, like, book, like, consultation or anything like that, it's Kunbi, K-U-N-B-I-E-S-Q.com. Or Kunbi, um, K-U-N-B-I-E-S-Q instagram and twitter perfect but if you follow me on twitter you're gonna find so many things (laughs) well we're gonna make sure that we link all of that up below and that we actually are having your business partner on the podcast soon too so i'm so excited to have both of you Mm -hmm. on the show and talk all things legal and preparing your business being smart with your business so kumbi thank you so much for being here this was awesome yeah thank you brandy for having me i love what you're doing for like wedding pros and thank you thank you (laughs)